Welcome to the unboxing technology series by Digiterati. This video is on ELK stack. From management and um, your issue management, everything is basically managed by this management tools like Jira or Azure DevOps and other tools which are mentioned here. And then our area, our focus today is on the area called monitoring. So, so where our stack actually falls is in if, if you talk about a DevOps ecosystem in DevOps ecosystem ELK falls under the category of a monitoring system. So once you have your deployment, it, what deployment is basically it can be on any infrastructure. It can be on container or it can be on cloud and uh, it can be on virtual machine. So once your uh, code is deployed on the infrastructure. Uh, the infrastructure will have various components. You might have database, you might have network, you might have uh, virtual machines, right? Containers. So you gather information from all these sources, constantly monitor it. And uh, this is where our ELK stack, the picture is too big. our ELK stack comes into picture, okay? So there are other options like Nagios, Prometheus, AWS own component called CloudWatch. So there are many, many open source implementations as well as uh, licensing implementations. But our focus is on the stack called as Elastic Log Stack and Kibana. And uh, when you have some alert to be generated based on your metrics. You can connect with any kind of alerting and notification systems like page, jet duty, Splunk. So all these components are nothing but something which handles your alerts and basically escalates the issue and it notifies to the appropriate team. Uh, so this component is all about notifying the issue as and when an issue happens in your ecosystem. So our component is all about building this monitoring ecosystem, right? So even though the capabilities of elastic search is much more, but the focus of this particular discussion is ELK stack for monitoring. Okay. And Site reliability engineering is another aspect of managing your whole IT deployments as well as IT process to be precise. So we are bringing in uh, another culture or we are looking at the culture going in an organization in a different perspective here. So the focus of DevOps and SRE one or other way it might look similar, but the key word in SRE is uh, DevOps is all about making the development operations seamlessly, right? So to reduce the complexities involved in the development process and uh, to reduce the... Uh, so DevOps basically concentrates on, as I have mentioned here, it concentrates on the development pipeline and uh, collaboration of teams and uh, monitoring your, uh, sorry, yeah, monitoring your deployments and uh, creating the infrastructure for uh, deployment. So it's basically con uh, uh, concentrates on infusing the various components involved in developments as well as operations and seamlessly connecting them all together. It basically combines all the things involved in development and operations. So it builds an ecosystem. But does it really care about any proactive measures or uh, does it really care about uh, uh, any auto healing capabilities or uh, such? No. So here in SRC, the key focus is the key word is it's always about reliability. At any cost, the system should be functioning appropriately for that. You must scale your application as much as possible. So if your deployment is limited, if you uh, deploy a particular thing in only one server, if it goes down, maybe 
the application might not be available so scale as much as possible scale whenever needed based on uh, the available metrics so here the key focus is making your system available to the client or the customer or uh, whoever involved in the ecosystem as much as possible without any downtime and it has to be available seamlessly and if at all any issue is uh, uh, happening in the ecosystem there must be some kind of self healing capability there must be some remedy which is happening automatically so if this thing has to happen automatically you need to bring in a change in the process itself right so in that process even devops might play a role not might a play a role in mostly it will play a role so sre what it basically talks about is how to make your entire ecosystem reliable by bringing in various principles so let's not deviate from our actual stack and uh, let's not dig deep into sre we have already talked about it in various uh, scenarios i mean various uh, occasions but since i want to relate erk with sre so here since the, the key focus is on scaling and reliability and in fact the key word is reliability that is making the system available and i was telling if a system has to be reliable what plays a uh, crucial role is somebody needs to monitor the system isn't it without monitoring the system how can you make uh, it reliable so unless you see what is happening unless you measure the metrics unless uh, you see whether the cpu is uh, utilizing properly or it is over utilized if at all it is over utilized do we need to span a new server so all this unless you monitor you'll never know so when you want to make a system scalable and reliable the most the most important aspect is monitoring your system right hence sre hive heavily relies on monitoring your deployments right so here is uh, the pillars of sre and if you see one of the key uh, focuses here in i mean the key focuses of sre is incident management problem management they need business continuity there must not be any kind of halt because of any kind of failure in your ecosystem so for any kind of uh, uh, problem any kind of case that is happening you must be having a remedy for it right so if there needs to be a remedy for it you must be properly monitoring and uh, you need to have a proper service level uh, agreements infused and uh, you might have some automatic remedies for uh, your system to be recovered right and there must be proper backup facilities that has to be automatically infused so every system nowadays uh, in enterprise implementation they are heavily focusing on following sre principles so if you want to follow sre principles obviously to manage incident management is nothing but addressing the problems that are happening and being proactive that is even before the problem happens if you monitor for example i might be constantly monitoring my virtual machine and i might be checking the cpu utilization if the cpu utilization crosses 80% maybe i might be immediately spanning or uh, immediately uh, spinning one more virtual machine and similarly i might be checking my database load or i, I might be checking how many requests that are being handled by a microservice so if it is getting too many requests i might be uh, running one more container so based on the metrics which you are gathering you might be taking a decision which might be automatically finding a remedy for the problem so you have to infuse this sre principles to make your ecosystem reliable and make your business process continuous so as i've been repeatedly mentioning for this gathering metrics monitoring the applications and uh, at any point if you want to quickly understand the things proper visualization plays a very 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 crucial role right and uh, so as you see here incidents management and incident response is all about 
monitoring the system how do you monitor the system by ingesting the data ingesting data is nothing but gathering data from various sources constantly monitoring it and when you are monitoring it you might have your own thresholds that is you might be checking whether my cpu utilization is this whether my uh, network traffic is this so based on the condi conditions you might be performing alerts right and uh, you might be based on the metrics you might be coming up with your own remedies for the system and uh, the major important aspect is why uh, we go for this is first of all you want to be proactive rather than responding to the issues responding to the issue is nothing but resolve and even before the problem is happening constantly by you are using the metrics and visualizations you have you can analyze your system and you can review your system if at all something is going to happen wrong in the future proactively you can address the issue right so to do all this you need to have a proper ecosystem one such ecosystem can be built by using elastic stack so i already talked about it we already talked about it but very quickly i'm going to move into the practical stuff so before i move into the practical stuff let me quickly introduce you the components one by one individually what elastic search is capable of doing what log stash is capable of doing and what kibana is capable of doing so as you see i might be deploying this component called beats so what they do is they might be gathering metrics from various sources like database or your application deployment or your operating system so they might be and you have to understand they are capable of ingesting the information directly to the elastic search or even log stash is capable of sorry they are capable of even ingesting the data into log stash and log stash and in what case you'll put it in the log stashes generally beat this component called beats they will not transform the information they will be just providing the information if the information is uh, 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 readily consumable by, consumable by the elastic search it is not an issue but in some cases the metrics that are being gathered might need some kind of transformation some kind of conversion needs to be performed so in that case log stash plays a crucial role so what is log stash it gathers the information it transform the information and in fact it process and uh, transform the information then it infuses that information into elastic search so to uh, understand about elastic search sorry log stash what it basically does is from various sources it might be from a file or it might be from a system log or it might be from amazon services or azure services no matter what log stash can get the inputs and uh, in the practical stuff i'll show you how this inputs are uh, configured so once you configure the inputs you might be performing some transformation of activities the transformation means you might be modifying the data or you might be modifying the format or you might be filtering the data so once you process the information then what you will do is you will output that information into elastic search is it always elastic search no log stash as i told it's an independent component it can be combined with elastic search also but as you see in the picture you can send the process information to other sources also it can be stored to s3 amazon's s3 uh, service which is a storage server or you can store the information into mongodb or you can store it into a csv file or any other information source also so you have to not assume that log stash is compatible only with elastic search no but it is very popularly used with elastic search so what is basically log stash is as you see here information from various sources are gathered so first of all in log stash you will be configuring inputs then you will be talking about how to transform it and in case if you want to filter the information what filtering logic do you use here then once the information is completely processed you will be specifying the output that is the target right so practically i'll show it in a couple of minutes so that is what log stash is capable of so let me go back to the place where we are discussing so when you have something to be parsed and transformed or filtered we infuse log stash otherwise you can directly put information into 
elastic search so i already told you elastic search component what is elastic search component so as mentioned here elastic search is i earlier itself i told you it is something which is meant for handling large volume of uh, information second it is horizontally scalable so something which is horizontally scalable is something which is vertically scalable is a client server environment most of uh, available tool uh, kits are by default client server environments in fact uh, prometheus is also client server environment and uh, many others also client server environment whereas elastic search is basically distributed environment and it is a document oriented search engine they call it a search engine because the way the information is gathered and stored here is very very uh, effective for doing document searches so the amount of time taken for resolving a query is very very less in case of elastic search so and if you ask about what kind of data it can handle it can handle structured data semi structured data even unstructured data even you can it can deal with files also binary data is also textual data numerical data even geospatial data so it is capable of tackling various forms of data so elastic search is not just for performance monitoring it can be used for various business purposes for example if you want to build a product catalog you want to store millions of products and their features and uh, whenever you want to build a e-commerce site and uh, if you want to quickly search the product and uh, if you want to quickly produce results for user request in such case elastic search deployment could give you a great flexibility for dealing with the consumer needs right and uh, it has a flexible data model that is you can adjust the data model according to really uh, based on your business needs and there was a project called as lucin and in fact elastic search was built on this library called lucin which was an apache project earlier and elastic search was built on it so to be very quickly uh, to talk about why we go for elastic search in what cases we use elastic searches to quickly perform textual search operations or uh, product catalog searches any e-commerce site major e-commerce site uh, uh, internally mo most popular sites i mean popular uh, e-commerce uh, websites use elastic search already for uh, performing catalog searches apart from that if you want to aggregate your information quickly uh, uh, generally uh, why we go for aggregation is you know that if you are performing data warehousing operations for analysis you need some aggregated information that is finding means averages standard deviations all that stuff you can perform it very very quickly you can perform warehousing operations as well as mining operations very quickly with elastic search data and uh, if you want to store json information and if you want to store geospatial information and uh, generally if you want to implement a system which is very very quick for example if you want to uh, go for auto suggestion or auto complete in all these cases the search has to be very very quick uh, in google if you type a word, uh, letter a immediately you are getting the response so for such kind of implementation because if, if the information available is less no problem but if you have volumes and volumes of information if it has to be searched very quickly in a feature like auto complete or auto suggestion elastic searches we go for solution and apart from that even it is used in security analytics but to leave it all aside our focus we are talking about elk stack so our focus is it can also be used for metrics analysis and storing metrics right so in our case and in uh, elk stack it is not used for textual search or product search or data aggregation or anything else in elk perspective it's up to us so if you want to uh, use this system minimally you can use it if you want to uh, use it on a big scale you can use it so it is very very flexible for usage so if you just want to use it minimally just for storing metrics in that case also you can use it and uh, if you want to 
use it for storing large volumes of information for, for, for uh, handling metrics from various two sources even in that case also you can use it so our focus is this elastic searches we are going to use it for metrics and analytics and within a while i'll be show, showing you how elastic search stores it okay but as of now if you want to understand what elastic search is all about it is basically a distributed document oriented if you know mongodb you can compare it with mongodb because here also the uh, data is basically stored in json format and uh, but in a way it is more advantageous than that of uh, mongodb mongodb uh, let's not come go there and have, jump into com uh, comparison and all let's not deviate but in case if you know mongodb you can compare this is quite a similar kind of database like mongodb but with other capabilities so that is about elastic search and when we get into the actual course we'll uh, understand in depth about what are all the various components in elastic search what is its data model and how right now also i'll practically show it very quickly but let's talk more deep about it in the actual course so once you have data stored in your elastic search the next important component that comes into picture is kibana so what is kibana basically is if you have data available in fact kibana can also gather information from other information sources also it's not only from elastic search alone every component which is uh, part of this stack is independent in its own nature it, they are combinable with any other uh, stack also but the popular combination is elk right so uh, from the elastic search kibana can gather information and uh, it can visualize you know what visualization is all about so you can uh, present the information in the form of various charts it might be a scattered plot or it might be a line chart or it might be a histogram or you might want to uh, show the information in the form of table so any uh, kind of visual uh, component which you generally use in a dashboard kibana supports and you can build dashboards by using this component called kibana so the whole idea is all about as i was mentioning right from the beginning gathering the information storing the information and visualizing it so as i have mentioned many times right from the beginning so you can gather information from various sources and you can use it for various use cases and if you talk about elastic search it's always about large volume and high speed right fast data processing large volume but our focus <coughs> is not about building applications by using uh, elastic search but building a monitoring and uh, metric system right so what kind of information uh, we can store in elastic search for uh, monitoring needs is as per our concept it can be if you are deploying web services or web applications you can get the web logs you can get the application logs you can get the database logs and if you have uh, docker containers installed you can get the container logs so basically you can gather log data then uh, you can get network related information operating system related information container related information and apart from that application performance metric that is number of requests that are happening memory being consumed and uh, what microservices are running what are stopped whether it is live or whether it is turned down all this and similarly uptime data how how long the service has been uh, up and uh, about the responses everything so all this metrics can be stored in elastic search so before i go into practical uh, discussion within just 10 minutes i'll be going into the practical stuff the last and final thing i want to talk about is logstash is a simple component it has its own mechanism which i'll discuss second kibana it's a visualization component we'll talk about it but the key component is the place where your data is present and uh, you have to understand 
it's basically distributed in nature so if it is distributed in nature you have to understand um, you will be building a cluster so when i talk about distributed environment the key word here is a word called as cluster isn't it so cluster is nothing but a collection of nodes so when you want to install or deploy elastic search you might be installing a couple of nodes so there are again uh, various categories in nodes uh, there is something called as master node and if a node is dedicated to dealing with data it is called data node and if a node is dedicated to uh, gather the request it is called as client node so again there is various need node categorizations are in elastic search but you have to understand this is a distributed environment so your elastic search deployment would be a cluster where it would be a collection of nodes and in elastic search the data is actually stored in the form of document so what basically is a document is a json structure something of this sort okay like this coming and generally uh, if you have uh, worked with mongodb you say a collection of document to be collection in rdbms system a collection of record is table and in uh, a database like mongodb a collection of uh, documents is nothing but a collection in elastic search the term used for a table or a term used for a collection of documents is indexes so as mentioned here indexes store documents right so so generally in a cluster the place where your uh, tables is stored the common word used in most clusters be it cassandra or anything we call it partition okay partition is a common word in some databases like mongodb and even in elastic search the partition is what we they call shard right so your data might be logically st stored under shards that shards might be replicated so shard 1 will have multiple replications so the replication 1 is here replication 2 is here shard 2 is again replicated that replication 1 might be here replication 2 might be here so each of your shards might be replicated okay a shard is nothing but a logical collection of your indexes i mean uh, one index will be actually stored in multiple shards so the key terms here is cluster and the individual uh, uh, nodes in the cluster is what we call node and uh, according to the data model your table is what we call indexes here and in an index what is going to be there document is going to be there and a document is nothing but a json structure that is what elastic search is all about i mean in the infrastructure but i'm saying it's all about uh, infrastructure but it's not if you dig deeper into it each component is quite complex i'm not going into the implementation aspect of it as i have just mentioned in the previous case if you are using it for application development we are talking about in monitoring perspective but if you are using for application development uh, like if you are implementing features like a, a product catalog or uh, searching operations or if you are uh, using it for auto completion feature and all based on the complexity of your ecosystem uh, your cluster will have as i told data nodes will be there master nodes will be there and we might have uh, some standby nodes which is convertible into master nodes and uh, ingest node is nothing but as i told it's a client node which would be exposed to request so it is exposed to the client yeah please so it is going to receive a request so now i'll go work i think um i request everyone to please stay on mute please so this is how a real time ecosystem of elastic search cluster will be 
particularly if you use it for application development. So a node which deals about all the nodes, which has information about all the nodes, which monitors all the nodes is what we call master node. The data will be no, uh, stored in data nodes and the nodes which are exposed to client to receive the request is what we call client nodes as well as the nodes which are responding can also be called as plain nodes right so here uh, we can use any major technology to interact with elastic search cluster right so this is just the understanding of what ELK stack is all about what it is capable of. So let me practically show what this tool is all about and how to install it, what platform can you can use it for installation, the licensing aspect of it, everything. <coughs> so when you talk about ELK stack, So we have uh, two facilities. One, you can go for an on-premise deployment. Two, it provides cloud deployment options. So Elasticsearch is available on cloud. So if you are going for a cloud deployment, obviously it cannot be available for you for free because they are offering you infrastructure. So you need to pay for the service, whatever you are um, opting for. But for uh, if you are managing things by your own, right, you don't need to actually pay for it. You can use it on your on-premise deployment. In that case, you don't have any kind of license, I mean, any kind of uh, cost involved. If you search, I have already downloaded and installed it, but to let you know, so look at the various platforms it is available. So any kind of ecosystem generally it is best suitable to be installed on a Linux ecosystem, but it is available for even Windows platform, Mac as well as all other major platforms even it is capable of running as a container as well right so we have to download this windows version because i'm using this windows ecosystem right now number two so once you download you have to understand If you download and extract it, it will appear like this. The version is 7.13. So this is the folder structure of it. You have the configuration here and Elasticsearch.yml will have the basic information about your cluster, name of the cluster, node name. So here if you edited this, you can configure your cluster. So look at this, the port number in which it go, going to run is 9200, right? And here under binaries, you'll find the elastic search demo, which you can start. In Windows operating system, you can also run it as a background service. There is no installation involved here. It's just you need to run it either as a service or you can use this batch file and you can run it. Second item is 
so these are individual components with elastic search alone you can start working and if you look here i have i haven't uh, deployed it as a service i manually uh, uh, ran it by using command line so what did i do i opened the path binary and i ran the command call elastic search so what did it do it created a single node cluster that single node itself is a master uh, node data node everything right so it has installed all the necessary basic files and it started the cluster and as i have just shown you the cluster runs on the port number i mean the cluster is available for consumption on the port number 9200 so look at this the cluster name is elastic search it is running actually so if it is running all you'll get is this result and to interact with this component you need a appropriate client or application right so you can use java language or python or any language through apis you can interact with this server so elastic search does not provide any direct component uh, gui component to interact with elastic search either through application you can communicate with it or using kibana you can communicate with it i'll show how to communicate with this elastic search using kibana but as of now the first and foremost thing i have explained you right now is you need to download elastic search in case if you want to try with windows even in linux usual installation steps which you need to follow and start the service so once you run the service the server will start and it will run on the port number 9200 to check whether it is running if you go to your browser and if you give this request all it will give you is the information about your cluster i told you right so elastic search is built based on the library called lucin so the lucin version is 8.8.2 this version okay and uh, the version of uh, elastic search is this one right so the second component is kibana let me put kibana download all are available in this elastic.co so what license it has is elastic license but as i told as long as you have your own uh, implementation and uh, you are going for your on premise implementation you can use it for free oh. second thing is <coughs> for this also we have to download the windows version and let me show it once you download kibana here also you find a similar kind of structure binaries in which you have the kibana daemon which you can start to start the server and you have to understand the configuration of kibana is available in kibana.yml file so the port number in which kibana runs kibana is basically a web application it runs on the port number 5601 if you want to explicitly change it you can change it the server name all the configuration you have to do it and look at this by default it is capable of connecting with elastic search so here the default host is this in case if the elastic search is running on a different port number you need to configure here right so in kibana.yml file all this basic details is available so even kibana i have started and just now i have shown you it runs on the port number 5601 so my second execution is 
Kibana, right? So I opened uh, the Kibana path until binary bin, and it is executed and it is running. So let me show the UI. Five six zero one. So this is how the Kibana UI look like. So you have various capabilities here. You can go for security settings and you can go for various monitoring activities and uh, you can go for building dashboards. And uh, if you want to ingest your data, that is right from the beginning, I've been using this word ingest. So if you want to add data into Elasticsearch, you can do it. So look at this. So if you want to gather data from Active MQ log, or if you want to gather data from Active MQ metrics, look at the various possibilities that are there. Q Keeper, Windows metrics, so you can use this specification whichever they have given. I'll tell you how to do this. I have already uh, done the setup. I'll explain this. But for gathering data from various information sources, they are providing you the way to deal with the stuff. And also they have provided some sample data as well. And in the sample data, I already added this e-commerce. And you also have sample web logs as well as sample site data. When you're learning, so when you were uh, doing this ELK course, we might be using this data to understand in-depth analysis of the data which is available there. And since it is a large structure, it might be giving us huge capabilities for analyzing various elastic search operations, right? From querying, posting, everything, right? And more importantly, I need just focus at this point. See, in the home page of this Kibana, you have this component called as, we have, we have already explored add data at any point if you want to add data into Elasticsearch. So this is a visual medium through which you can interact with Elasticsearch. And I'll go for the dashboard part in a while. But before that, there is this component called as Elastic sorry, Dev Tools. You have to understand. This elastic search makes the data available in the form of a REST service to be very precise. I already told you local host 9200. We got the cluster is running. So look at this. Any uh, just now I have shown you, right, uh, I added the e-commerce data and the e-commerce data is available added in the form of documents. So when I make a GET request, you know what REST services is. So when I try to connect to 9200, that is our elastic search and I'm specifying the name of the index. So here in uh, Elastic Stack terminology, we don't call it a table or a document. So this is index. Kibana Sample Data Commerce is an index. In that, we have what? Documents. So we have various documents. If I just give the search command, it will show all the documents. So look at this category, men's clothing. These are the documents.
elastic search as i was already explaining here either through programming you can do it second to directly interact with it the means is it is exposed as an api so by using get post delete put methods to add data you might be using put method sorry post method if you want to update information you might be using put method to gather information you can use get method and even if i want to create a new metric sorry not metric a new uh, index you can use put and uh, to query you can use get see and if you want to read document wise you can even specify underscore doc slash one you can read the individual doc it doesn't seem to be document one So if you have a document ID, if you provide the document ID based on the document ID also, you can retrieve the information. So now what I do is, let me uh, quickly explain you what log stash is all about. And I'll also explain about beat and then I'll show how the information is visualized. I'll come back to this development utility in a while. So if you get into this Kibana, you find various options like discover, dashboard, canvas, maps. So in dashboard, if you go, you'll be finding already existing dashboard. So I imported the e-commerce data. So that e-commerce data has a dashboard, inbuilt dashboard already built. And I'll also show you how we build our own uh, dashboard. So basically, this interface is all about visualizing your information. So as far as visualization is concerned, you can uh, show information in the form of a table. This is what I have shown in the form of JSON earlier, isn't it? This is what we are visualizing here. And as I was telling in Kibana, you can use Kibana query language to filter the information. So based on any category, if you want to filter based on this, you can filter the information. here. So this is a inbuilt dashboard and right now i want to tell you how this elk ecosystem will get the information so i have shown you two things right now started elastic search and uh, the cluster is working in fact the cluster is having only one node second uh, starting kibana and i wanted to walk through into kibana and i want to show you what uh, things it has and just to reiterate again, I want to tell you, if you want to run some queries by using, and I want to reiterate once again, the way you interact with Elastic searches through the REST interface, which it offers, using which you can make a request and you can get the responses in the form of documents. Those who has worked with MongoDB should be aware, in MongoDB, we use JavaScript commands to query the documents. Here we use a REST interface to query the results. So apart from this development tool, we also have Kibana analytics in which you have options like discover. In discover, I find various indexes that are gathered.
I mean the various fields that are gathered through this index called metric bit. I'll tell you how this metric bit came. So this is some operating system data which has been gathered for uh, I hope for the past four hours. In fact, in the morning I configured it. Let me tell you how this data is gathered here and how it reached here. Okay. The CPU cores, which is a constant value eight. No matter how many times you query it, it will be always there. So this is memory. So if you visualize it. So I'll get there after explaining you log stash. So how do we, how did I get that information there? That is what I'm going to tell you. So one through log stash. So what log stash is all about is collection, pass, transform, log information or any kind of metric information, right? And if you are asking me about the business data, business data can be added only through programmatic means. Log stash is something which gathers information from other information sources like your operating system, your network, your log files and all. So we have to download this log stash and I install this log stash also. I mean, I started this log stash also. Log stash is also running. The third component is log stash so look at this i started log stash it is running and please listen to me uh, for the question how do i store information into elastic search two if you want to add information about business information documents and all you have to programmatically do it if it is a metric based information which is gathered on a time to be time basis for that purpose only because right from the beginning I've been iterating that our focus is on monitoring systems. So for monitoring systems, obviously you'll not be using business data. Performance metrics is what you'll be tackling. So here you do have A folder called under log stash, you have a folder called as config. They have given a com sample configuration already. And in fact, I also added my own configuration file. So the default settings of log stash is available in log stash.yml. And the log stash status can be checked on the port number 9600. And you have to understand in log stash, what you would be doing is basically pipelines is what we are going to create. So what is a pipeline? As I was explaining in the theory, you might be getting an in input, you might be processing it and you might be producing an output. So that is what pipeline is all about. So in pipeline, as of now, what we are mentioning is any file with dot config will be treated as a pipeline and that pipeline will be executing. I repeat once again. In log stash configuration, any file with dot config is treated as a pipeline and all the pipelines will be executed. So the number of pipelines that is the batch size is 125. I have only one pipeline created here. I'll show you what it is. So I have created a pipeline called as 6 log dot config. So there is a service called syslog. I mean, in Windows Server it will be there, but right now in my system it is not there. But assume that in Windows Server system there is a service called syslog which will be running on port number five and four, which would be exposing the metric information about the Windows Server on port number five and four. So in log stash we are configuring a YML file to listen to the port called five and four and to listen to the service called syslog. So once you gather the information, 
will be posting that information to Elasticsearch. In the first discussion, I told you Elasticsearch is running on the port number 9200, right? So the logs will be following the Ruby syntax. But the key component which you need to understand and find here is the source of information here is input. And I am not doing any transformation here. Directly, once I gather the metric from the source, I am moving it to localhost 9200. So this is how you configure pipelines in the log stash. You need to write a YML script here not yml you need to follow log stash syntax in the form of json to write a pipeline and they have already given one more sample as well so from the beat server if you want to gather information it offers metrics in the port number 5044 so once you gather the metric you are writing it into elastic search so once you do it, what happens is So if you go and uh, check your I think the Kibana server. Let me restart it. Meanwhile, while it restarts, let me explain now. the next thing there is another component called as i was talking about beats right so similar to beats so what is beats a data shipper for elastic search so it will provide data to elastic search so it connects with various uh, information sources like file or logs and it will put data to elastic search so that is a similar service called as metric beat which is a lightweight shipper for elastic search again so it is implemented by elastic.co itself a very very useful uh, utility so let me specify metric beat download so so far i have told you the capabilities of kibana elastic search and log stash I just briefed it out. So metric beat. So in this case, I, I told you in the if you remember from beat. In our case, it is metric beat. This one. If at all you want to parse and transform, you need log log stash. In my case, I don't need to transform it. I want to directly post it to Elasticsearch. So I'm going to use metric beat. Okay. So. I'll tell you the capabilities of metric beat. So I already downloaded it. When I explain it, you'll understand the capability of it. See, I open metric beat. So in metric beat, you have the application as well as it has, as usual, every, every component here has a configuration. So I have this YML file here. So as you see, it loads various modules which are available in modules dot d all right and uh, i'll tell you what this module is so basically what it does is whatever the modules which you have enabled i have already enabled windows module 
it will gather information and uh, it will write the information into kibana right and uh, it also writes information kibana in the sense it will uh, even create the dashboard also right it will also write information into elastic search so you have mentioned output to the elastic host here so what exactly does it do so if i open this module look at this this particular metric beat is capable of gathering information from active mq apache aws under aws it has various sub uh, modules it can gather metrics from s3 it can uh, gather metrics from elb in case if you are into aws from azure c it is capable of communicating with virtual machines it is capable of communicating with containers databases and similarly docker metrics can be gathered and the kafka metrics can be gathered it can communicate with kafka consumer kafka producer brokers and mysql database performance metrics can be gathered so you have various modules even with tomcat it's a very 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 useful uh, utility so among the available utilities what did i do is i have enabled two things one system metrics i have enabled it and second module dot sorry windows module i have enabled it see system dot yml is enabled as well as windows dot yml is enabled remaining all are disabled so just now i have shown you the configuration file that is metric beat dot yml how does it work look at this i have shown you it works based on it will look into modules dot d folder anything with extension dot yml right it will load and execute it so in our case under module dot d dot yml plus disabled is there everything is disabled except windows and system so i enabled only these two things so if i open this and show you so look at this the module is windows we are uh, sending performance monitoring metrics so according to the configuration i already told you it is uh, sending information to elastic search and here the period is every 10 seconds it will be giving the performance monitoring metrics as well as windows service metrics it will be passing every 60 seconds so this is the configuration which is given in this metric beat so once it is enabled so to enable it you need to run a command called as metric beat enable the service name windows i already enabled it so let me stop this so let me show the previous commands which i have the module list it will show all the modules that are available and to enable it you need to use enable command you have to use enable module name i already enabled it and to start the server use module b.exe it will be started and running that means every 60 seconds it will be sending the service metrics as well as windows performance metrics to elastic search i sincerely hope uh, kibana is up and running let us check kibana server is not ready yet mm.
in the yaml file bana.yaml i didn't edit it at all So in, in Windows, I know that this, that's why I started everything even before the session still like. Yeah, this time this is, has to be starting. Yeah. So what did we do? We used that metric beat and we sent the information, right? So when you come to this Kibana and uh, when you go for discover, actually by default, you have to understand it won't be there. So you have to get into the stack monitoring, stack management. So under stack management, you have index patterns. So under index patterns, 
you have to create a new index pattern and uh, whatever the information stores uh, sources we have right so in our case i have a log stash configured it is showing it up so from every information source wherever you are getting the information right so my indexes are i manually created something called school and i manually uh, through metric beat we got this and uh, the log stash is pushing the information through this right so for each of this you can create an index pattern so i created an index pattern here already so when you create an index pattern what happens is when you go to discover you'll find metric beat index so this metric beat has various fields so look at this it is showing up the data so what did we expose we expose windows data right so in windows cpu percentage utilization right so it is providing the data and when you visualize it it is showing up the data for the past 15 minutes and in fact we've been gathering the information for the past 4 5 hours and uh, you can visualize it in various other formats as well so if you want to produce it in a table format it's available as a table format as well area based on nature of the data you can use any visualization technique and you can save it if you want various metrics are available to us some metrics might not be uh, data it is for example os name we have only one value forever some things might be scalar that is metric in nature cp course is also always constant memory free and numeric data is showing up the bytes so you can create a dashboard as well i already created uh, using the metrics i just put a couple of for cp percentage i added the chart as well as memory percentage i add the chart at any point you can go back and get to this discover and you can make a search and you can add it to the dashboard here by pressing save so i'm just briefing out the process here the process is whatever i have spoken in the theory so using beats or log stash you can push the information and once you push the information you can gather the metrics over here and you can visualize it and you can add it to the dashboard and you can build a dashboard over it so this is for monitoring and performing metric related activities monitoring related activities and uh, for alerts and notification this kind of works you can use elk but elastic search is not just about that you can also tackle this for handling business data as well right
for example, if you want to create, this is the way to create your own indexes. So to create a new index, you can use this. If you want to add some data, so the information which it takes is JSON information. So we need to specify the document ID. So to create an index, you need to use put method and uh, to add a document, you need to specify the document ID and you need to specify the index name. And when you make post request, it's going to store the data. So if for the question which you asked earlier, how to store the data, if in case if your data is a business data, like the way you work with MongoDB or other databases, the way to interact with it is some people, I mean some databases we use language like SQL in a, a database like MongoDB, we use JSON and uh, here we use REST interface, okay. And for example, to get information, can make a get request. So look at this, it is gathering the information. And you can perform search operations. So this is how do we interact with Elasticsearch for business purposes. But for ELK stack, we won't be using this kind of a REST interface. Directly, we might be pushing the information through Beats as well as log stash. So this is the overall view about this ecosystem, configuring it, running it, using this combination of Elasticsearch, Hibana, Beat, Logstash, and uh, the REST interface which it provides. And you also understood that the data model is JSON oriented and it stores information in the form of document and to interact with it, we use a REST interface or you can write information through Logstash and various other tools which is capable of pushing information into this and one more way is you can use programming languages like Java or Python or C Sharp. You can use Elasticsearch uh, library to push information into. In real time we do that mostly to push information into Elasticsearch. So using this opportunity, as I told, my agenda is completed to expose what this stack is all about and what are its capabilities and the in-depth analysis of this cluster environment and how to configure the pipeline and uh, how to create dashboards, all this stuff when we take a comprehensive course on Elastic log dash as well as Kibana course, you'll be able to understand it completely, right?